This is Prophetess Marilyn Fisher. I'm starting a new series, Meet Me at the Altar. The Lord has really impressed it on my heart to begin this series, which is a takeoff from a warning to the church. Today, I'm going to talk about the nature of the church. And the question we want to answer is, is the church still significant in today's modern society? Let's go to the Word and see what the Word has to say about it. See, when Jesus spoke of establishing the church, he was actually not thinking about today's formula, formal type of church structure or various denominational religious organizations as we know it today. He was actually referring back to the Ecclesia, which is referred to the body of Christ coming together and assembling. He said, I will build my church. So let's look at the first scripture that we're going to take a look at today. We're looking at the book of Matthew. If you have your Bibles with you, you can go there. We're looking at the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter, looking at verses 13 through 19. Peter's confession, he said, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? Some said, the son of some said, Thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom do ye say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, there's a lot to be gleaned from this, what, uh, what Jesus said here in this scripture because he was actually trying to teach them the concept of the church. The first part that we look at here is, we look at the part of saying, who do men say that I am? And, you know, there was a lot of different opinions during that time of who Christ was, but Christ's identity was yet hidden. But Christ kind of flipped the, the question there and asked his disciples, who had been around with him for quite some time and about that time they should have known who he is and peter came and he had the right answer and jesus said unto him flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you but my father who is in heaven and that's the first principle that we have to think about when we think about the power of the word and the foundation of the church is that the church is built on the identity of Christ and who he is. And that is a supernatural thing that only can be revealed through God the Father. And that's why he said, flesh and blood cannot reveal this. Only God the Father who is in heaven can make this revelation to someone who is lost. So. We have to understand here, based on this conversation that Jesus is teaching his disciple in the conversation that he's having with them, is that what we say must also match with what we do. Because Peter later says, he rebukes Christ and says, um, when Christ says that he must die for us, he rebukes Christ and Christ says to him, get thee behind me, Satan, meaning that Peter was now contradicting the first revelation that he had on who Christ is. That he is the Christ, the one that was sent to die for us. So we, it's very important that we put these two scriptures together and come to the understanding that it's not only important to know and have the revelation of who Christ is, but it's also very important to have that match with what we do because we can't you know, say that he is the Christ and then contradict that concept that he came to die for the sins of men. So that's a very, very important point that we must keep in mind 
as we are learning about the foundational teachings of Christ and the church. Again, I am taking this teaching from the, the, a message that I did previously called A Warning to the Church. The church has gone far away from its foundation and it's time to come back to basic. So let's look at another point that Christ teaches here um, uh, from here. Let's go to Matthew 16 verses 17 through 19. That's the full scripture, but this is our focal scripture that we will focus on as we uh, discuss this. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, Simon or Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now you see that? He said, upon this rock. This was a revelation that was given unto Peter by God himself. And upon this rock, Jesus is the rock. And because uh, he is the rock, he is solid. It is a solid foundation Amen. for the church to be built upon. So let's continue to look at this because we said, again, flesh and blood cannot reveal this truth to anyone but the Father which is in heaven. And that's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man comes to the Father but by me. It's through this revelation. As we continue to look at this, I want you to seriously consider these truths as Jesus uh, reveals them to the church. What do you think today? I'm with Low Key here also, um, and a couple of other people were out here doing this beautiful Bible study Amen. on this beautiful Sunday. So what do you think about that concept? Jesus said that I am that foundation. I am the rock. Well, um, Jesus is the way and whatever he teaches, if you're not, if you're not rooted and grounded on Jesus teachings, you have no power and authority over evil. Jesus says, I have authority from my father. So how can you have authority over these evil spirits and demons around us? If you don't have Jesus in your heart and in your teachings. You know, I want to thank the Lord for that. Amen. You know, you're kind of gone ahead in the Bible study. <laughs> you're, you're hitting the points. You're hitting the Amen. nail Praise right the on the head. Yes. Because the that is the foundation. Amen. Without Jesus, there is no power. Amen. So let's continue this study as we learn more about the modern day church and where it is and where it should be Amen. according to scripture. And I just want to take a minute right now and just summarize the points that we just discussed. Here we said that what Jesus was teaching his disciples, his disciples is that the Ecclesia must be established upon the recognition of his identity Amen. as Christ, yes. the anointed one, and his anointing. Without the anointing, there is no Ecclesia. There is no church. So we need something, and just like uh, my friend just uh, said to you, we need something to stand on. That we must stand on a solid foundation, which is the rock. The wise man built upon a rock. It's the foolish that built upon the stand. So we see here that we must draw strength from the reality and the recognition and the truth that Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. Amen. As we continue here, we're going to look at another point at, um, on this. And if you need a minute to uh, kind of find your place where we are in this study and this teaching about the foundation of the church, we must come back to the foundation. We must get back to basic. Amen. You know, if we, if we think about society today and, and the church, the church doesn't look the same in any particular place. You know, 
Um, it depends on your denomination. It depends on so many different factors. As a matter of fact, there are organizations that want to take advantage of a 501c3 tax exempt status that, you know, they form a, an assembly, a gathering of individuals, and they call it the church in order that they may also receive the benefits of the church. And, and the funny thing about this um, is the fact that many of them um, are churches of Satan and um, they do, they, they dance with snakes and they worship, there's nudity uh, places that fully worship completely nude and um, they call it a church. So this is why it's so important for us to build the church on the rock and on the truth of who Jesus is. Uh, I have an input? Sure. You know, there's a lot of con artists out there. You know, a lot of people who take advantage of people, kindness. And you know, Jesus Christ, that's why he went into the temple and whipped all those people out because they were buying and selling. Nowadays, I think the church became a business. It's all about who has the nicest clothes, the nicest cars. It's like going to high school, fashion show. And I'm very disappointed because you see all the people who are less fortunate in the back. And all the people who have better things in life are in the front. You know, I believe that if you're truly a man or a woman of God, you see someone in need and you have a church, you should automatically bring them up front and help that family or sister or brother. If you can, not an obligation. But if you want to follow Jesus' teachings, you remember he fed thousands, a multitude, before he started preaching. He was, he said, they came to see me. Mm -hmm. I have to feed them. So we can preach all we want, but if you're not feeding someone and helping someone, then there's no person purpose for the mission. I want to thank Miss Marilyn and Matthew. You guys are so wonderful. I love what you guys are doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's get back to the um, teaching that we're looking at today again. This is why also based on that same very point that we just uh, talked about, it is important for those who, who uh, operate and who uh, assist at the altar to pray because it's not going to be by a human agent but it's going to be the anointing of Jesus Christ Amen. that Hallelujah. is going to make the difference at the altar. And that's why we say meet us at the altar today. Now let's look at another point. Christ, the foundation of the church. This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. And if you are watching right now and you want to um, get your Bibles out and find that scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 we're going to look at verse 10 and 11 it says according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon for other foundation can no man lay than, than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. No other foundation can no man lay. You know, it's one thing, you know, in modern day church, we have our techniques, we have our uh, methods, we have our style, we have our different ways, we, we even uh, imitate other people's styles. We Everybody wants to be T.D. Jakes or Creflo Dollar or Paula White. And, you know, there's different denomination with different styles of, um, of delivery. But nevertheless, we must have more than form. We must have substance in our teaching to the church. We need to have substance. So, it is important not only that we watch what we say and we build the church on the foundation of Christ, Amen. but we must also not just have those techniques, but rather concentrate on the substance. Amen. What we believe and what we do is more important than our marketing, 
our methodologies, our programs, and our activities. This is the truth. We must have the word of God. Amen. Without it, there is no church. Amen. What do you think about that? Um, that is interesting. You know, the Holy Spirit just told me, he said, we have to have faith. You know, faith is the key to everything. Jesus said, if your faith is small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. A lot of people have faith in money. We have to have faith in God, have faith in his word. I love the Lord because throughout my walk with Christ, God has been provided for us 100%. You know, everything that I have is because of God. And that's how a church should be built on the foundation of having faith on God completely, not half. Not a little bit of having faith with money, having faith with my car, with my job. No, having faith on God completely, his word. And once you do that, you should have no... Of course, we're humans. We have tendency to start thinking that there's a possibility, something that might happen. But when you really, really believe in God, you know it can happen. So there's no negativity, only positivity with God. So praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so... The gospel we promote and the Jesus we proclaim must, must be in line with the truth of Scripture. Amen. The foundation otherwise will crumble. We must be wise master builders built, building upon the cornerstone. If the building is not fitted with the cornerstone, it will crumble it will not stand amen so we must proclaim the truth of the bible not man's opinion not man's truth not tradition but scripture amen. is the foundation yes but we, we know that jesus is the word amen and jesus has given us his truth amen disciple makers worldwide ministries presents Prophetess Marilyn Fisher on this must-have DVD. Every home DVD collection would benefit from the addition of these two timely messages. Supernatural provision and behold, I give you power. Find out how to live each day enjoying God's supernatural provision. No matter where you are financially, God can cause good things to abound to you. This teaching will help you to trust God in spite of your current situation. In today's economy, every Christian will benefit and be inspired with this soul-lifting message, supernatural provision. But it does not stop there. The second message will teach you about the spiritual enemies we fight. When we know how to appropriate the power that God has given us as his children, we can get the victory over every spiritual foe. Every soldier must learn how to wield his sword in every battle. In order to be effective, you need this DVD. Behold, I give you power, will give you the knowledge to be victorious. Order today. Call 904-589-5660. Operators are standing by to take your order. Thank you. Welcome back to Meet Me at the Altar with Prophetess Marilyn Fisher and my guest, Luis Torres. Amen. And the others who are with us in the studio today as we enjoy this special teaching on a warning to the church. This is a series that I am doing. It is time for the church to come back to the Bible. Amen. So let's look at this. Symbols of the church. We're going to look right now at symbols of the church. It says here, if you have your Bibles with you, if you would go to Acts 20, verse 28. As you're finding that, I want you to know that this series is going to open up a lot of eyes. It's important for us to teach the truth, to speak the word in season and out of season. All right, let's go to the word right now. The Church Crisis Purchase, Acts 20, verse 20, 28. 
It says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Take heed. This is a warning. Paul says this, you know, as he is visiting the church in Ephesus. This is Paul's last visit to this particular church. And it was very important for him to instruct them in truth. And he warns them to take heed to the truth. And that they know that it is not man's church, but Christ's church. He is the purchaser of the church. The cost was very expensive. It cost the royal blood of divinity. He came and died for us. This part here is very dear to me because I think it is very vital that these couple of points that I'm about to uh, point out to you right now, that you really take them to heart. It kind of brings together this concept in a different perspective. One is not only that Jesus paid the price for our sin that he died for us he is really our champion he made a public spectacle of the devil and his dominion see they thought that he if he would come and pay the price for our sin for the remission of sin that they would kill him and they would be hell would hold him and they would be finished with him but he had another plan Oh, the mysteries of God. Mm. How mm. wonderful he is. Yes, he is. But he tricked them. He literally, literally, he used his intellect, his power, his divinity to teach the devil a lesson that he'll never forget. Because the word of God says if they knew who he was and what he was actually doing, they would have never crucified him. But because they crucified him, he multiplied himself. He took away our sin. He bought back the fellowship that was lost during the fall of man in the garden. This is not just a simple concept. It is layered, layers upon layers. It is so deep and so beautiful that Jesus Christ came and he died for us, that he could renew our fellowship, our relationship with God Almighty. And we're going to see how this idea of uh, this renewal and what happened in the, in, in the garden during the fall of man, because that created chaos. It scattered everyone. Man could no longer come in the presence of God as he did previously. God came in the cool of the day and he met Adam and Eve and they had wonderful, great fellowship. But when Adam sinned, man fell. And when God came back to look for him, he, he hid himself. Why? Because he was afraid. You see, sin puts a division between man and God. But when Jesus died, that veil, that partition that was between God and men, it rent. God rent the partition so we could come into the Holy of Holies. Amen. So we could come in and say, Abba, our Father, what great love, what great intimacy. I want you to realize that the cross is more than the death of Christ for sinners. Because not only did he die, he outsmarted the devil because he resurrected again. Amen. So what did the devil gain? He lost it all. So what do you think about this beautiful concept? Oh my goodness. You hit it right on the nail. You hit it right there, man. You know, when you said that Jesus tricked the devil, I don't think he tricked them. I think he just fulfilled the, I know he fulfilled the prophecies because his word 
is actual and it doesn't come back void. Remember when he said the first should be last and the last should be first? And he said, if humble yourself and God will lift you. Choose the lowest chair at a table and the owner of the house will put you in a better position. See, Jesus ultimately did everything his father wanted him to do. And that Amen. is the key. Amen. See, when he died on the cross, it wasn't his will. It was his father's will. Amen. And I want to thank the Lord because, I mean, I want Marilyn, you just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. I love it. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. That's what it's all about today. We're, we've got to come back to the Bible. And that's what's going to make a difference in modern day society. It's what's going to change the heart of men without Christ, without acknowledging him, without recognizing him as the owner and the founder and the foundation mm. of the church. All we're doing is coming together just like another party, like the world has. Amen. But we have to make a difference. God has a plan. Yes. So let's continue here um, as we go through this. Let's look at another point, and that is the church, Christ's body. This also is very beautiful to me. I have to tell you, I, I was so enthralled into this teaching. I was so uh, delighted uh, as I was studying this. This was such a beautiful, beautiful lesson. And even uh, for myself, I, I received quite a few nuggets of truth that just touched my heart. And I know it's going to touch the heart of the people as well. If you are a pastor, if you are a leader of any group in the church or auxiliary in the church, this teaching is for you. We must get the truth. We must get the foundational truth in place that we could build upon no other rock but Christ Jesus. Amen. But the spirit makes alive, but the word, it kills. Yes. We need the spirit. We don't need the letter of the law. The letter kills, but we need the spirit Amen. and the truth. Yes. So as we continue here, let's look at 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 9. And this is kind of coupled, you can look at this a little later, the idea of Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 22 and verse 23. Our focus, uh, our focus scripture again is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, Minister Torres, I'll give you a minute to uh, find that. Part. We are looking at 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 3, verse 9. Okay. Again, the word says, And had put all things... Let, let me start a little bit uh, higher here. Um, but we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Mm. Ye are God's building. Amen. We are God's husbandry. He's the farmer. He, we are just the vine. He is the true vine. Because from him we gather our sap and everything we need to be nourished up in the truth and we are co-laborers with him and had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all the church which is his body the fullness of him that fill it all in all we must come to the truth of the knowledge and the admonition of christ in the fullness of who it is he is. That's why the word says we go from glory to glory. And what should the end be? Oh God, this is such a wonderful, delightful teaching today. I'm just thoroughly enjoying this Amen. beautiful day. Yes. These truths Praise the Lord. of God as he ministers even to us in this cool of the day beautiful. as we are studying the word of God and, and letting God minister even unto our heart. We really hope that you're being blessed right now. Amen. You know, you can give us a call at any time. We will have our number on the screen. If you need prayer, if you'd like to join us for one of these Meet Me at the Altar meetings, we will be happy to put that information on the screen and how you too can come and participate with us. Amen. 
So let's continue to study. Since the church belonged to Christ, that means we are co-laborers with God. It is God, it's God's power that energizes the church through his spirit. Amen. Jesus is the head. Yes. And we are the body. Yes. Fitly knitted together. Can you see that visual? Jesus being the head of the church and the body and the head coming together. He is the leader. He is the provider. He is the lover of our soul. He takes care of himself. Hallelujah. He takes care of his body. Amen. Which is also the bride of Christ. We are his body. We are the bride. It is, it is, it is not, it is not the building that is the body of Christ. It is the believer. And that is why it doesn't matter where we meet on a beautiful day like this. Amen. It doesn't matter if we meet out or we go into a building, if it's a cathedral of glass, if it's a, a multi-million dollar building or just a barn. Mm. What's is, it, what is important is that we, the body, comes together Amen. and assemble together and Christ is the center of that assembly. Amen. He said wherever there are two or three gathered together, he would be right there in the midst of us. He will visit us. So I invite him today. Partake with him today in this word. He said he'll show up. That's why we're saying today, meet us at the altar. Christ will be there. Amen. Won't you be there too? Are you enjoying this teaching today? I love it. I love it. It's, man, my heart right now is racing because I know how much the Lord loves us. Look how beautiful the weather is. Look at where we are. We're here. We could have been doing so many other things, but today, every day is a beautiful day to talk about Jesus, to tell the world how, what Jesus has done for us. How powerful he is. How obedient he is. Yes, we must be yes. obedient too. We all have problems. We all have jobs. We all have families. But we have to put God in our lives. We put have God to. first. Yes. Seek God first. first. The kingdom of God. Amen. And everything Amen. else will be added onto thee. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise <laughs> the Lord, brother. Yes. And you know, we can just segue right into this other wonderful point. The church Christ is love. Amen. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he desires to have fellowship with us. Amen. That God would send his only begotten son to die on a cross, a horrible death, just so he could be in relationship with us Amen. again. Amen, yes. We need to take advantage of that. Yes. We really need to take advantage of meeting him at the altar, to be with him, to have intimacy with Jesus, our Redeemer. If, let's go to Ephesians 5, 25, verse 25 through 27. And Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27. Hopefully you're looking at these scriptures with us. It's, it's awesome to really look at the scriptures even as we talk about them, as we learn about Christ. It's a, another way to take it in. You know, you can take it in orally, you can take it in visually. The, you know, you can experience it. The more of our senses that are engaged, the more it is, the easier it is for us to have retention. So, our key verse here, you can look at the other scriptures a little later, but our key verse here is verse 27. It says, that he might present it, meaning the church, to himself, to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that it should be holy and without blemish. What do you think about that? I think, um, you know, God is so wonderful. He's pure and holy. That you know Moses, he couldn't. Even, Moses couldn't even look at him. He came in, in 
through Jesus Christ, we become clean. I want to thank the Lord for that because he is so wonderful. And the only way we can present ourselves without blemish in front of God is through Jesus. Amen. We cannot do it without Jesus. Amen. If you try to, you can take a shower a thousand times, you'll still be dirty in God's eyes without Jesus. Amen. Good point. Praise Good the Lord. point. All our righteousness is like filthy rags. Yes. You know? Yes. But you know, going back to this concept or this uh, principle of the marriage supper, that every believer has an appointment, has a set date for this wedding, this great marriage supper, where we will be, the body and the head will be reunited. And all the chaos that occurred during the fall of man will be eradicated Amen. forever. Hallelujah. The devil will be cast into a sea of fire and brimstone to be remembered no more. No more. The accuser of the brethren. Yes. We'll Praise get rid of him then. Yes. And see, once the body and the head comes together, guess what comes next? We said before that we were co-laborers with him, that we are his instrument, God's instrument. We're co-laborers with him. Once the body comes together, God comes into the temple. Mm. We're going to look at that a little bit longer. And everything comes together. What a beautiful visual. Amen. What a beautiful picture. The two have become one. Amen. What God puts together, let no, no man mess. put asunder. Yes. Everything coming back to its humility. Everything coming back to its beauty. Everything being restored to its original intention. The garden, the paradise is back. Praise God. Praise the Lord. No spots. No spots. No wrinkles. No wrinkles. Just a beautiful, glorious bride Amen. going from yes. glory to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That just makes my heart feel triumphant. Yes. Looking forward to that day. You know, all that we suffer in this world, eyes have not seen. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store on that glorious day. We're going to do the third part of our lesson. This is the third part of this series that we're doing at Meet Me at the Altar, right here. We want you to meet us here. Yes. You can come Please. here. We will give you the time and the place Please. that you can meet with us. And we can go over these beautiful scriptures concerning Christ and the body. Welcome back to Meet Me at the Altar with Prophetess Marilyn Fisher. I'm here with my friend, Mr. Torres himself. Minister Torres is with me today. And we are coming to the conclusion of this message on the foundation of the church. We're calling America back to its foundation, which is the Bible, the Word of God. Amen. Let us finish with, uh, we're going to go to Ephesians, the second chapter. And we're going to look at verse 13 through 22. Now, our key verse here uh, is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But in your spare time, take a minute and read that entire, uh, all the scriptures that has to do with this foundational truth that we're about to discuss, which is the community. You know, like I said at the beginning of this study, the word church is not the same as it was in Jesus' day. It was an assembly of believers coming together for the purpose of Jesus Christ himself. It had nothing to do with organizations or denominations or, you know, a whole bunch of different complicated things. It had to do with believers, those who believe in Jesus Christ, coming together, assembling themselves as a community. And that's the concept we're going to talk about, this foundational truth, that the church is a community. Let's read Ephesians 2.13. But now, in Christ Jesus, 
Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. See, we all come together as a community by what Jesus Christ has done. You couldn't do that before. It, it was in the Old Testament. If a man saw the glory, you remember when Moses said, show me your glory? And, Jesus, and the Lord said, God said that he would pass by him and that he would keep him in a cleft of the rock to protect him because we could not see his face. Prior to Jesus' uh, death experience, him being crucified and to pay for the remission of our sin because the wages of sin is death. But it's the gift of God that has come to us right now. And prior to that, man could not look upon God. And you can also remember uh, the burning bush experience when the people broke forth from the area that they were not supposed to come into. They died. And the man who stretched forth his hand, Uzzah, to touch the ark. Well, it was, in that particular case, it was for a different reason. But that's how holy things were. And because man is sinful and separated due to the fall of man in the garden, he could not come in the presence of God anymore. So that was a major problem. But now, since Jesus has paid the price, we who were afar off from God has now made nigh unto him. How glorious that is. Amen. He is right here with us. Yes. We are in his presence. There's fullness of joy. We Amen. don't have to die because we've come into the presence of God Amen. anymore. So this is a beautiful thing that we could come nigh to God. Because the Bible says no man had seen God at any time. Are but you, now we can see him. Are you ever, um, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're ever too far off where God can't reach you? I don't believe anyone could. And God said my arm is not short that I can reach and touch you. He said that his ears Amen. is not shut up, that he couldn't hear our cry. It's, he says also, even if we made our be bed in hell, he'll be with, the, with us. Amen. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. So it doesn't, how can you get lost if he's always there? Amen. And we just have to, you know, start practicing the presence of God. Uh, uh oh, a while back there was a book. The presence of God is a tiny book with some wonderful uh, precepts and principles about staying in the presence of God. Amen. Someone got it right. And that's where we have to be. And that's the whole purpose of this part of the lesson is that there was a problem. We were separated. We fell. Man said, I'm afraid. You know, they said to Moses, send Moses. We don't want to go. We don't want to go and talk to God. We don't want God to talk with us. Send Moses, let him go, you know? Uh, so God has rent that partition so that now we can be nigh unto him. Amen. So the problem has been solved. Our sins have been forgiven. The penalty for our sin has been paid. And now we can come nigh, we can come nigh unto him. We can come on Father's chest and say, Abba, we can come into the Holy of Holies, you know? Back then, even um, when the priest would go in to minister, they had to put a rope to his foot in case he sinned. They would have to pull him out of there. Even though the priest was allowed access, if he sinned in there, to cost him his life. Amen. But look at God today. We have access now. Access has been granted Jesus. to you, to me, to the church, to come to God. We could boldly come before the throne of grace in the time of need. We Hallelujah. Got help. Hallelujah. What do you think Can about I, that, brother? I want to say one thing. If you're watching, all those who are watching right now, prostitutes, drug addicts, Amen. killers, rapists, child molesters, you can be forgiven. God, you're never too far off. You can be forgiven. Don't let nobody tell you that you are not welcome in the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. You can be forgiven. Please do not listen to the devil or enemies telling you that you can't be forgiven. 
Maybe the judge won't forgive you, but God will forgive you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Anything that you have done, anything except blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, but you'll learn that as you study the Bible. So I want to thank you for watching. I love my sister. Amen. You did a great Amen. job today. I love you so much, man. Well, well we're not finished I know yet, we're not finished, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that was a very, very good point. <laughs> The price has been paid. Amen. We can come home again. And the, uh, Jesus Christ by his spirit is calling you. If you need salvation, it's available. He said all you have to do is believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And you can be saved. Hallelujah. Confess it with your Amen. mouth. Amen. Yes. So that is why we are here. And that, this is what's been made available to us. And this is why this truth is so vital to the body. It is because the relationship has been restored with God. And we can now go from glory to glory Amen. in Him. There is a continuous restoration. And that is the true purpose of the church. We've come to the conclusion of the matter. The true purpose of the church is restoration of that relationship. Amen. If you are not living the kingdom of God here on earth, then the truth has not come unto you. Yes. Isn't that a glorious point? That is the purpose of the church. Amen. Jesus died that we don't have to wait to be with him. We can have him right here. Hallelujah. Access has been granted. Yes. Restoration Hallelujah. has taken place. Praise the Lord. The condition of the church is that we are now at peace with God. Let's look at a scripture here. It says, the con it says Ephesians 2, verse 14 through 20. That's what you would look at. But today I'm just going to focus on verses 18 um, through 20 for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints citizenship yes you know how many people want to be naturalized citizens of the United States how much more should we want to be citizens of the kingdom of God amen and of the household of God Amen. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone now there's something right there that is dear to my heart if we shut up the mouth of the prophets if we don't acknowledge the apostles what are we building upon these ministries are foundational. We need them in the body of Christ. We need the operation of the true gift of the Spirit of Christ in the church. Because the word says very plainly here, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stool. Amen. Amen. Yes. You want to say something. Hey, I, I want to say th there's something. So when I was thinking of Paul when he was in prison and the preachers, there was false prophets out there trying to take Paul's place. Do you know Paul's message, what he said? He said, it doesn't matter. It's all about what the message is being said. As long as that the name of Jesus is being spread, Amen. that's all that matters. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. So with this, there is no longer a, a separation, a hostility and enmity between man and God. You know, there was a hostility against God. Mm -hmm. Those who do not know Christ are at war with him. The word of God says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of Christ. You know, sometimes people get so angry because they don't understand Christ's identity. They don't understand the price that he paid and the love that he has for us. 
that they want to shake their fist at God and they would not repent even unto death. But I want you to know today, if you are watching this program, meet me at the altar. You can meet him today. Amen. You could come to know him. Access has been granted. The wall of partition has been rent. God was so eager to rent, to break it, to put down the wall and to wave the flag of peace. You know, while we were at war with him, he was seeking us. He was making a way back, but we were fighting. Lay down your weapons today. Lift up your holy hands and surrender today to Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ. We all do. Yes. And let me show you that very principle because what God is doing right now through the church is he's building a body. Yes. For himself. Amen. God wants to dwell in us. Yes. That's where he was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. He was with us, in us, through us. We, we, even today, we cannot breathe in unless he breathes out. Amen. He is our all-sufficient one. We move and we have our being in him. And yet we are at war with him. Oh, the love of Christ. Oh, how he loves you Hallelujah. and me. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God, for Jesus Christ and yes. the blood that was shed on Calvary for my sake, for the redemption of my sins. Because it says here, he said about his body, Christ's body, he said, this is my body, broken for you, for the remission of sin. He said, take and eat in remembrance of what I've done for you. See, his body has been broken and because of that breaking, he's multiplied. He's in every one of us, reconcil reconciling the world back to God, bringing in all the chaos that happened during the fall is being reconciled, it's coming back together again. So God could come back into his rightful place as ruler in our hearts, to sit on the throne again. He is as a despot, a despot king that has been has ad, ad, advocate advocate I'm sorry that has adjudicated, adjudicated no advocated. that's not advocated the throne he's left the throne and he's waiting to come back I want to thank you for joining us for meet me at the altar where we are go delving very deep into Christian principles that the foundational fathers intended so that we can get a better understanding for the word of God and so that the church would be more effective. As we come to a conclusion of our lesson today, we are finishing up with community of faith. We're in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 through 22. However, our focal voice is Ephesians 2 verse 13. As we were saying earlier, the foundation of the church is the blood of Christ. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now, there's an image that is so visual here. We see throughout this lesson how Jesus is the cornerstone of the church. We also see that he is the head, and we, his believers, are the body. We follow whatever the head says. Says The head is here to lead us, to nourish us up in the admonition of Christ, to teach us. And we also see that once the head and the body are connected, God sees us as this beautiful, glorious temple without spots or wrinkle. And this just makes the picture complete. This is truly the wedding supper of the Lamb when we shall come to the ta banqueting table with our Lord Jesus Christ. When we uh, started this lesson, there was, you know, a revelation I didn't have at the beginning of this lesson. But as we delve deep into this lesson today, my special guest, Minister Luis Torres, who was with me earlier as, um, at the beginning of the lesson, we found out a 
awesome, awesome truth. And that is the plan of God, even to fall in the garden, God saw it all ahead of time and he put a plan in place. See, the truth is God really wanted to have children. He wanted to have sons and daughters. And he was thinking of you. So the lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth. And Jesus was to come and make an appearance on earth to die for our sins. It sounded like a simple and an easy plan. And truly, Satan would not have mind, except that he did not know what it would truly accomplish, that we would, we would, he would never die. We would just multiply and that we, he would resurrect again. He would defeat hell and the grave and death. Death could not hold him down. He is truly our champion. So God has accomplished all these things as he unraveled the truth that is in the mystery of Jesus Christ. One thing that I want you to take away today is that Jesus wants to have fellowship with us through his Holy Spirit. He did this all. He shed his blood to bring us back in peace with our Father, which is in heaven. Now take the time to just reflect on that and to love on Jesus today. Always keep him at the front of your mind. Oh, how he loves you and me. This is the end of our broadcast again today. Again, I'm Prophetess Marilyn Fisher. I want you to join me here for these uh, broadcast telecasts because we are truly laying down a solid foundation, which is Christ, the solid rock, who truly is the rock of ages. So please join us here. If you'd like to join us live, the telephone number will be on the screen. You can reach us here for prayer. I will also tell you the number. It's 904-589-5660. We have people standing by to pray with you and watch the power of God set you free because that's what he came to do, to set us free from all bondage and to cause the church to be effective. And that is nourishing up the body and reconnecting us with God the Father. God bless you. Again, thanks for coming in. Thanks for watching this telecast. We love you very much. We appreciate your support. Please write us or call us and let us know if this is having an impact on your life. Because you know, the the force that was out there was truly against us. It was an amicable force. It was a terrible fight and a struggle. But now God has made peace. Jesus Christ came to reconcile us and we could all have a good life through him. God bless you. And again, thanks for being here with us today. God bless.